Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn how to create a simple program for the Fanuc robot that you can see over here. So, as you can see over here, the end effector is describing a square in the user frame. So what happens over here? The robot goes to a safe position, then approaches the surface, then goes from the position 0, 0 to the end of that square, then moves the end effector along the edges of the square, goes back to zero position, goes back to the safe position, and goes back to the initial position. So here's how our code looks like. We have some instructions over here. L at P1, 200 millimeters per second, fine. Okay, so let us learn how to create such a code. Okay, so let us see how to create a program. We'll bring the program menu by pressing select. And here you can see program name and you can see comments. Here I have a number of programs. So to create a new program, I will press this key F2 and then I will give a program name. I will call it ACA A C A 66 and then once I'm done I will press enter here it is and then to edit this code or this program we will press edit but before you start with coding and with programming you have to make sure that you're in the proper frame in my previous video I've defined a frame with its center over here x-axis along this direction and y-axis along this direction so when I'm entering my data points I need to make sure the data points live in this frame how to verify that how to make sure that you have the proper frame selected so if you click on shift and on coordinate you'll bring this menu and the user frame should be frame 4 since I defined a user frame 4 in my previous video. A link to this video is given in description below. So, there is an option to specify at the beginning of this code, that is, in the first line you can specify your user frame. However, since this is just an introductory video on robot programming, I will not do so. When you execute the, co the code, the teach pendant and the robot controller will automatically recognize this user frame since I will always make sure that this user frame is being selected. However, if you code in one user frame and you select another user frame, there will be some issues. So don't do that. Be very careful when you specify the user frame and this can be done on the first code line. Okay, so the main question is, how do we code or how do we program FANUC robots? Well, there are several methods. One method is to directly enter the point coordinate. So we can simply enter the coordinates. For example, if we want to move to this point, we will enter these coordinates over here. However, there is a more, more elegant way, a faster way for programming. And this is the so-called teaching method. So what I will do, I will jog my robot to a certain position, and then I will memorize that position or that point. And this will be my first point that I want to go to. So you can, for example, specify a neutral position. For example, you can simply jog to certain position. First, don't forget to reset the faults. And let's say 
let this position be initial position. So, and I will record this point. So, watch here, what will happen now. I'm going to re release the dead man switch and I'm going to press F1. And I obtain the first line of code. So, what happens here? This cell means that it's a linear motion. So I'm going linearly from one point to another. At phi 1, this at means that the end effector is currently at the point 1. And P1 is the memorized point. 100 is the velocity. And you can change that by simply selecting here. And you can manually enter, for example, 200 and press enter and this is the fine motion this means that once the, the robot reaches that point it will briefly pause at that point there are other options for the motion however in interest of brevity I I'm not going to cover them okay so let's define the second point the second point will be safe position over here so let us jog our robot to the safe position. Again, first clear the faults. And then jog, jog the robot to the safe position. So let's go in the minus Z direction. However, I'm going to move the robot from this position a little bit along X and Y axis. Okay. So let us record this point. Again, release the shift key, go to the end and press shift F1. Okay, now you have recorded that point. Let's increase the velocity to 200. And press enter. Okay, so let us go to the origin of our frame. So let us jog the robot over here. First decrease the velocity to let's say 5 since you don't want to hit the plane. Then again shift reset, clear the fault and go to the zero point. Okay, so here is our zero point, here is our origin point. Again move to the end point, shift F1 to record. And the velocity is fine. Let's move it 100 millimeters per second since we are approaching the plane. Now, let us move to this point, to this point, to this point, and to this point, and let us memorize these points. So let us first go in the upper left corner, reset your alarms and go along the X direction. Notice here, actually the Y direction, notice here that my end effector is moving along the Y direction in the new, in the frame that I defined, that is in the coordinate system with the X axis along this axis, along this axis and Z axis along this perpendicular to, to the plane. This is because I have defined a user frame in that way. And for more details on how to define a user frame, please see a video whose description and link is given below. So I'll move this point a little bit over here and let's record that point. Again, release the shift, press the shift and press F1. So here's the point four. Okay, so let's go to the next point. Increase the velocity a little bit. And let's record that point. Let us go down. And let us record that point. Let us go back to the origin. There are two ways to do that. You can either 
specify the point over here since probably the origin is point P3 and you can simply enter that point however you're not going to do that we're just going to manually teach the robot to go to that point again clear the faults and go back oops you can see here what happens right and this happens because the velocity is 50 percent so decrease the velocity when you're close to the surface so let us go back to our original point or close to the original point okay and let's memorize that point by releasing shift and pressing shift F1 okay here's the point of P7 then let us go to the safety point how can we do that we can either jog the manipulator to that position or we can press F1 and here we can define the point we have several options we have linear motion joint motion and I'm going to select the third option the default option press enter and here basically I double the points so two points P7 and P8 correspond to one physical point the point over here and I don't want to do that so I will change the number over here and I will press number two since you since number two is the safe position should be the position over here so let's change that press here two and press enter okay and finally let us go to the initial point by again pressing point enter and over here we'll enter point one and enter okay note what happens over here so you can observe that over here basically the robot is currently at the point p7 so this symbol at means that the robot is at the point P7. Okay. Okay, so let us move our manipulator from that point. I'm going to go a little bit in the Z direction over here. And let us see how to run the code. So the first step is and always a good practice is go to is to go to the first line. Okay, so there are two modes for running the program. There is a step mode and there is a continuous mode. So by basically pressing shift and reset, we are going to clear the alarms or clear the faults, right? And then by pressing the forward button, we will run the code. We pressed shift forward to run the code and I'm holding the shift key. And if you observe the teach pendant, you can see right now you're at the point five, you go to the point six, you see the cursor is at point six, you're now at the point seven, then you go back to the point two, and then you go back to neutral position. Okay. So let's run the code again. First step, shift reset to clear the faults. Then hold the shift key and press the forward button. See what happens. Follow the teach pendant. and go back to the neutral position. Okay, so let us now run the code in the step mode. So let's see how to do that. So over here, you have the option step. So let's see when I press step, what happens? Here's the step button over here, step. 
And you can observe over here then that when I'm pressing the step button, something changes over here in this corner. Okay, so let us select the step mode and let's see what happens now. So now I will again press step and you can see here, you can see that the step mode is being selected. Now I'm holding shift key, I'm basically resetting the alarm and then if I press the forward button, let's see what will happen. Okay, nothing happens. Now, this means in that you're in debugging mode or in the step mode. So you can clearly control every step manually. So if I press forward now, robot will go to the save position and will, it will stop there until, again, I press the forward button. Then it will go to zero position. If I want to go back, I will simply press backward. If I press backward, I go backwards. And if I press again, I will go to the first line of code. So the step mode means that you're stepping through your code. You go step by step. You go step one, step two, or command line one, command line two, etc. So let us briefly see how, it, let's execute the code. Here it is. I'm pressing the forward button. Here and again, we go to neutral position and to our initial position. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I make, please subscribe or support my channel. Thank you very much and have a nice day.